Well, good morning, everyone, and what a wonderful morning it is to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I would like to just begin with a song, He Lives, to celebrate this wonderful day, and then in a moment, uh, Mark is going to come and preach. I was... Uh, excited about coming this morning because of what we are celebrating together. But let me share with you this beautiful, beautiful hymn that helps us to rejoice because Christ is risen from the grave. I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how. message for us this morning. Father in heaven, we thank you again for the joy of resurrection, the, the joy of having hope that you have given us eternal life through your son Jesus Christ, the hope of all who have passed on in faith that we will see them again on that glorious resurrection day. May we celebrate that glorious hope, that wonderful joy that you've given us, Lord Jesus. And we thank you for these things, Lord Jesus. Be with Mark and fill him with your spirit and give him liberty to preach from his heart as the scriptures have, have stirred his heart. Let him bring forth a message for us today. We ask in Christ's name. Amen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for being here with us at downtown First Baptist this morning on, on our annual sunrise service this morning. As always, it is a blessing and an honor to be here. And uh, it is a little unusual to be doing it this way, but we all have to accommodate the situation. Uh, we're going to be looking at 
First Paul's letter to the Corinthians. We're going to be in First Corinthians 15. We're going to start in. Uh, we're going to actually start in verse one a little bit of. We're going to start out with a little bit of the uh, original where he starts out, and then we'll get down to uh, the other verses in a moment. It's, uh, we'll start out with verse one. It says, "Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I have preached to you, which you also received, and in which you stand, by which you also are saved." If you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. Paul here is telling these people, if all you have is an intellectual knowledge of Christ and not a heart knowledge of him, the only thing that knowledge has gained you is a front row seat in hell. Amen. Okay. If he's not in the heart, then he's not doing you any good. Amen. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, which is another name for Paul, then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by over five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. You know, we have uh, Paul did not preach the resurrection of Christ because he read about it in some book or because someone told him about it. Okay? Paul preached the resurrection because he knew the Christ. He knew Christ. He had a personal encounter with him. Okay. My question for you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, is can you look back? Can you look back in your life at some point and see where you had a personal encounter? If you can't, then to, you need to do something very, very deep. You need to do a very, very deep soul search of this idea. Okay, Only you and God can figure out if what you thought happened actually really happened. Or was it an emotional response to a circumstance at the time? Amen. I will tell you this much. You better figure it out now and fix it if you need to. Because once you die, there is no fixing it. Yes. Okay. The, in uh, Romans 9, 10 and 9, 10, 9 and 10, it tells us exactly what we need to do. Okay. It says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. If you've not had a personal encounter with the Son, if you've not made that commitment, until you admit you are a sinner in need of a Savior, and ask Christ into your heart and accept him as your Savior, his this precious, precious resurrection we're about to talk about will avail you of nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you have a personal relationship with him, unless he is your savior, the resurrection is not a good thing for you. Because the resurrection will happen to everybody. But unless you know him personally, your resurrection is a resurrection for condemnation. It's not a resurrection for reward. We're going to drop down to verse 20. We'll start out from verse 20 down there. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Christ was the first to rise from the dead to receive a glorified body, which means as joint heir with Christ, I will also receive one. That is a glorious thought. Death is just a transformation, people. It is not a final thing. Okay? Death is just a portal from this world to the eternal world. Yes. Okay? This, this world here, this life here, is just a blink of an eye in the grand scheme of things. Once we leave here, we will spend an eternity in heaven with our Father. It is amazing to think, if you've ever read and studied the book of Revelation, that where we're going is beyond imagination. Yes. It's great. 
There is no pain, no suffering, no hunger, no sorrow, yes. no hot, no cold. Yes. Everything is perfect. Yes. And our only job, our only want is to serve Him. Yes. Romans 14 through 17, chapter 8. It says, for as, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Of course, there's also daughters too. That's not, we're not cutting y'all out. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Our Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit, that is a capital S, we're yeah. talking about the Holy Spirit, yeah. that we are the children of God. Yes. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. So if we be that we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. Yes, amen. If we are his, at his coming, we will be glorified with him. Your glory. Thank you, God. Amen. But if we're not his, we will rise to condemnation. Mm. There are two resurrections. There is the resurrection for us that return to Christ, and there is the great white throne judgment for those who are not. Yes. Those who are condemned mm -hmm. by their own actions to an eternity in hell. Mm -hmm. God does not choose to send you there. You choose to go there by rejecting His Son. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, 22, 21 and 22. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Yes. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Mm, amen. The death spoken of here is not only a physical death, but also a complete and total separation from the Father for all eternity. We have to remember here, people, that once we die and we rose again, there is no more death. There is no death. You can't die. The Spirit no, does not die. If you would go to the great white throne judgment and you are judged and you are sent for condemnation, you spend hell in an eternity. It never ends. Mm -hmm. And it speaks of a lake of fire. Imagine, if you can, being immersed in a volcano for eternity. And you can never end. We've all burned ourselves at some point on a pot or a pan or something. Imagine having that feeling over your entire body for an eternity and nothing can stop it. And it's all because you chose to go there. Mm. You can change that choice, ladies and gentlemen. You can make it a different choice. You can make yes. it a different ending. Yes, God. But you have to choose that. Oh, yeah. When Adam and Eve rebelled against God and ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they created a spiritual separation between us and the Father caused by the introduction of sin into the world. Mm. We brought sin into this world. We are the reason this world is in the situation it's in. God did not create it that way. God did not intend it that way. Mm. We chose that. And we are dealing with the consequences of our choices. The only way to remove that separation was by the death of a perfectly sinless sacrifice. Yes, God, thank you. That being Christ the Son. Mm. He's the only human that has ever walked the earth that was perfectly sinless. Amen. Verse 23. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are his at his coming. Ladies and gentlemen, there's coming a glorious day. There is a day, and I don't think it will be very long, personally. I think we're pretty close, but that's just my opinion. When our Lord and Savior will burst the eastern sky and call all that are truly his children home before coming to the great tribulation, which, be, which will be a literal hell on earth. There, I mean, it, it's a mind-boggling 
staying to imagine that the day Christ breaks that eastern sky and we all disappear, what are those left behind going to wonder? Are they going to go, oh, I should have listened more. I should have paid more attention to what I was told. Because there coming, there's coming a day after that. There will be millions saved during the Great Tribulation, but it will be through a hell on earth that man cannot imagine. It, it, it's not worth, the little bit of pleasure you have now in this time is not worth what you will have to go through in that end. Mm -hmm. First Thessalonians 4, 15 through 17. Mm -hmm. For this we say unto the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. There is, you know, there is no doubt, there has never been any doubt that there would be a resurrection. The re the, the, what is imagined, what is at risk here is where you are going. Yeah. When you rise, will you rise and be with the Father? Will you live in perfect utopia? Or will you live for an eternity in agony because of the choices you made? Mm. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we be with him forever. Yeah. We will. When he comes back, and raptures the church. When he takes us all out, we will not be required to go through the great tribulation. Mm. If we are his, if we are his children at his coming, we will leave here. We will go and we will spend eternity with him. We will come back as kings and queens. When he sets up his millennial kingdom on earth, we will return with him as a conquering army, yes. which has not even got it to lift a single sword, not to say a single word. Amen. Christ will not even lift his hand. All he has to do is speak the word and it all falls. Amen. We will, whenever he returns and sets up his kingdom, he will set up his throne on the kingdom in Jerusalem, on the hill. We will all be kings and queens. We will serve him worldwide. For a thousand years we will reign as kings and queens for him. At which point it will all be over. It will all be called to an end. We will all return to heaven and God will remake this world. God will destroy everything that you see today. He will return it to the perfect utopia it was when he created it. The whole world, all of creation will be destroyed and remade in the perfect way it was originally. Yeah. We will all return with him. Heaven will be returned to earth. Mm -hmm. And we will live with him here. On earth. Perfect utopia for an eternity. No death. No, no nothing. Everything is perfect. Yes. Yes. My question for you ladies and gentlemen is this morning. Are you going to be a part of that crowd? Yeah. Are you going to be with him in perfect utopia? Or have you chosen fun for a season? Mm -hmm. Are you going to have fun for a short while on this earth mm -hmm. and then spend the rest of the eternity in agony for a short season? They have a thought that, you know, it's amazing to me that, that people could even think of that idea. But they do. Some do. You know, ladies and gentlemen, if there is anybody out there that's listening to my voice and they do not know him, you do not need to be at this church. You do not need to be in the presence of anybody but the Father to accept his Son. If you feel the need mm -hmm. to accept him this morning, just please get down on your knees. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to come into your life and be your Lord and Savior. You do not need to be anywhere special except in the presence of the Father. Please, do not let this opportunity pass because there may not be another.
I'd like to close in prayer. Thank you for this opportunity today, Jim, Father, to bring your message here, Father. You know, I thank you for this opportunity. You know, Father, please be with all those who are listening and all those who are hearing in any way. Please touch their heart now, Father. Please give them the opportunities they need to have, Father, to come to know you before it is too late to have a Father. Have a Father, I ask this in my name.